The Infinity Stones have established a reputation as some of the most powerful artifacts in the history of the MCU. They are capable of causing levels of destruction and utter annihilation that some of the most powerful weapons in the MCU simply cannot match. Just a single Infinity Stone in the hands of a dangerous wielder is enough to tip the scales of whatever fight is being waged, and we have seen this time and time again. But is it possible that the Infinity Stones are not just instruments of blind destruction, but in fact have not just a level of sentience to them, but their own desires and wills? Every time we see Thanos add a stone to his gauntlet in Infinity War, he is overcome with a surge of energy that empowers him, but ultimately subsides. He only braces the energy of a stone for a few brief seconds before being able to wield it. This logic seems to be relatively consistent, until Endgame arrived and seemed to alter this rule just a bit. When Professor Hulk puts on the Stark Gauntlet, he too receives a surge of energy, but this not only seems far more powerful than what Thanos endured, but also seems much more aggressive almost as if the gauntlet is fighting against him. We have a theory today as to why. If this popular fan theory is true, then it's not simply because he was taking on the might of all six stones at once, but because the gauntlet was quite literally resisting and actively fighting against Professor Hulk. But why? Stick with us, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, because we just may have found the answer. It is widely hinted that the Infinity Stones have some level of consciousness to them, with the Red Skull stating that the Soul Stone in particular has a certain wisdom to it. In addition to this example, the Tesseract banished the Red Skull at the end of Captain America the First Avenger, seemingly willingly, at least to a degree, and the Mind Stone has been responsible for the creation of some of the most advanced artificial intelligence programs in existence. The Mind Stone not only was pivotal in the creation of Ultron and Vision, but seemed to give life to them, consciousness, feelings, and desires that no ordinary machine should be able to feel. For a full analysis on this video, see our video on how the Mind Stone may have played a part in the creation of the Kree Supreme Intelligence. In general though, it seems that the stones have had at least some level of cosmic awareness, even if that doesn't amount fully into a consciousness. But is it possible that this cosmic awareness is strong enough to allow one stone in particular to fight Professor Hulk and avidly resist the snap? This theory proposes that none other than the Soul Stone fought Professor Hulk. The Soul Stone famously demands a sacrifice from its would-be wielder in order to ensure that the wielder is prepared to make the necessary sacrifices in order to harness the power of the stone. But Professor Hulk never made this sacrifice. Hawkeye did. When Thanos snaps his fingers, he is transported to the Soul World, where he meets an avatar of his beloved daughter Gamora. In Infinity War, it is implied that he sees Gamora because she is the one that he actually sacrificed on Vormir. A deleted scene from Endgame shows that Tony Stark likely received the same treatment, though instead of seeing Natasha, he instead sees a grown-up version of his daughter, Morgan. Seeing as this scene was cut, it is up for debate as to whether or not it is canon, but we will leave that up to you. Professor Hulk, however, never got such an honor. No indication is ever given that Professor Hulk was allowed to enter the Soul World, and it is very likely that the Soul Stone itself shut Bruce Banner out from using the stone against its will. It should be noted, however, that in a Q&A on Twitter, the Avengers Endgame writers were questioned about why Professor Hulk never entered the Soul World. And although they never gave a clear answer as to why, giving more precedence to this theory, they did state that at one point or another, they did contemplate whether or not Hulk should meet with Natasha in the Soul Realm. In addition to this, they also wrote down a scene between Bruce Banner and Savage Hulk. However, it was never shot, and apparently the scene was never even storyboarded, with the writers simply talking about the issue, never filming it or even again storyboarding it at all, meaning this was a smaller concept that was only briefly considered. Had Hawkeye been the one to snap though, he would have likely been allowed to see Natasha in the Soul World, seeing as he is the one who made the sacrifice, and was thus prepared to harness the power of the Soul Stone valiantly. Is it possible that the Soul Stone wanted Clint to be the one to perform the snap, seeing as he was the one who earned the right to use the stone, not the Hulk? If so, then why was Tony able to wield the gauntlet with relatively more ease than Professor Hulk did, or even Endgame Thanos during the third act of the movie? This part is admittedly more speculative, but it makes too much sense not to include with the rest of this video. The idea is that the gauntlet, and specifically the soul stone, needs to judge a user's willingness to make a sacrifice. This however can happen in a number of different ways. On Vormir, this takes the form of forcing the would-be user to sacrifice that which they love. 
but if the stone is able to inherently judge a user's willingness to make a sacrifice, then it stands to reason that the soul stone can make this judgment wherever it may be. It doesn't necessarily have to be on Vormir in order to judge a user's will, but it's safer on Vormir seeing as the stone is out of reach without a sacrifice. Therefore, it's theoretically possible that in reading Tony Stark's character, it allowed him to wield the gauntlet more easily in his final moments. The stone resisted Bruce Banner because he was unwilling to make the necessary sacrifice. It resisted the 2014 variant of Thanos because this Thanos had not yet been forced to sacrifice his daughter and prove his will. Tony Stark, however, is famously one of the most selfless MCU heroes to date facing down death in each of the Avengers films. He flew a nuclear missile into a wormhole and wholeheartedly expected to die in the process. He risked death to destroy the Sokovian meteor in Age of Ultron and faced down Thanos to his last breath in Infinity War. In each of the Avengers movies, Tony Stark was ready to make the sacrifice play by laying down on the wire. If the Soul Stone was capable of somehow reading his character, it may have allowed him some semblance of peace in his final moments, knowing that he was prepared to make the heroic sacrifice, which is why Professor Hulk collapses from the pain of simply wearing the gauntlet, but Tony is able to handle it with relative ease, all things considered. But anyway, my friends, what do you think of this theory? Do you think the Soul Stone wanted Clint, Hawkeye, to be the one to snap and avidly resisted Professor Hulk's snap? Do you think that the key in this theory is actually the Soul Stone and the Infinity Stone's will? And why do you think Professor Hulk never entered the Soul World? As always, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team and have a great day.